Hello, in this video, I'm going to be training a regression model from Scikit-Learn um, to some COVID data in Wisconsin. So here I am on the Department of Health Services website, uh, data portal, and I can search for COVID here. And the data set I'm using is this one right here, the historical data by county. Um, so there are about 70 counties in Wisconsin. And what this data shows me is for each day, I wonder if I can run a data browser here. Um, it shows me for each date in each county um, all of these different stats. Um, so for example, how many positive cases are there total? How many um, new cases are there? How about over the average of the last seven days? And how many deaths are there? And ultimately what we're going to try to predict in this, um, based on this data is, well, how many deaths are there um, two weeks in the future based on looking at the stats for today? So I had downloaded this and, and I'm not going to do it again. And then there was a fair bit of data cleanup that I had to do here. And that's not the main point of this lecture. So I have a notebook for it that does all the cleanup. And I'm just going to kind of quickly walk you through this, some of the things I did here without spending too much time on it. Um, one, I pulled out just a few interesting columns. So for example, um, how many positive cases were there on average over the last seven days? And then how many new deaths were there? Um, we had a bunch of missing data, so I just dropped anything with missing data. And, um, and then I converted the date to an actual um, panda state time. And in the process, I, I dropped what hour it was. I just wanted to get the date without having the hour that it was posted. And, and then finally, um, the documentation for this data set says that um, negative 999 really means that there's less than five um, uh, five and whatever that field is. So it could be anywhere from zero to four. And, and so I think just for simplicity, I just replace that all with zero. We don't really know what that is. Um, you could imagine doing something smarter, like maybe 2.5 seems more fair in some sense. Anyway, so I get a data set that looks like this, right? And in a lot of cases, while well, there's um, uh, no new cases and no new deaths, maybe for some of these smaller counties. And then, then of course, for larger county, counties, this definitely is not zero. And, um, and so then I go down a little bit more. The other thing I want to do is I want to add a column, which isn't just, well, how many new deaths are there, but how many new deaths are there um, two weeks in the future. And so I had to do some trickery with um, time deltas um, to basically join the data on two weeks in the future. And, and you can look at that if you're interested. But, but in the end, I get a data set that looks like this, right? I know um, how many new deaths there are, are on this particular day. And then this last field is how many um, there are after the specific one. And I, and I saved all of this to this Wisconsin COVID data set. So that's what I'm going to be working with here. And I'm just going to head over here and create a new uh, notebook um, to analyze that. So let me head here. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import pandas for starters. So I'm going to say um, import pandas as PD. And maybe while I'm also at it, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and then uh, maybe I'm just trying to configure my matplotlib stuff first. Plotlib inline, and then uh, PLT.RC params. Um, let's just make the font size a little bit bigger. Great. And so now I can actually get my data frame. So I'm going to say data frame equals PD.read CSV. And what do I want while well, that? Um, file I produced from that other notebook, which is Wisconsin COVID.csv. And let me just peek at that. So that's all good. And maybe just to make sure that all these things are not actually zero, I'm just going to say, what does the data frame mean? And so I can see on average, um, in, a, in a given county in a given day, um, on average, one in four people um, have died. And and so what I'm going to be trying to do is I'm going to try, try to be predicting this field on, I might either try this, um, as a feature or this is a feature. And this is going to be my label column that I'm actually trying to predict. It's a quantity, which is why I'm doing a regression instead of a classification. Um, often before I jump into trying to do a regression, um, I'll do a scatter plot to just see if I can um, identify visually any patterns in the data. And so I might do something like this. I might say data frame dot plot dot scatter. And then I can say my X equals something and then my Y equals something. And so in both cases, the thing I'm trying to predict, my Y, is how many deaths are there going to be um, two weeks after this given date. And then my X, I guess, uh, for the first case, I'll try 
um, the seven day average like that. And so I can see a picture there. And another thing I want to do is I want to say, well, if I look at how many deaths there were today, what will that tell me about how many deaths there will be two weeks from now? And I see a slightly different pattern there. Sometimes for these, I like to say um, alpha equals 0 0.2 or something like that. Just give it a little bit of transparency when a lot of points are on top of each other. And so I'll do that as well. And, um, and, and so the other thing that I'm really like to do as we're going forward is we're going to train a, um, a regression model um, on both of these variables. And so I want you to get a sense when we score that, how that score corresponds to um, kind of the strength of the relationship in both of these. So I'll start with this one. How can we train a regression model that fits this to this? And the first thing I have to do is I may have to import it. So I'm going to say from sklearn.linear model um, import linear regression. This is the main uh, regression model we're going to learn this semester. So I'm going to do that. And then if I want to, I can create a new linear regression object, just like that. And, and so there's a few, um, there's a few uh, um, methods that we're going to want to learn with this. So some important methods are going to be fit, uh, predict, well fit, score, and predict. And we're going to be running those things on our data, right? So let me come down here and um, and what I can do when I'm fitting it or training it is I give it two pieces of information. I give it my um, uh, my x values and I'll give it my y values. And for the, the y values, um, that could be a series if I want. So um, I could just pull out that one column. For my x values, it has to be a data frame. And, and so let me just take a look at my data frame earlier um, what I'm going to do first is do a model corresponding to this plot, right? So I want to do it based on um, how do the deaths today uh, predict the deaths in the future. And so what I have to do is I have to plot this one column, these um, new deaths, um, into a data frame. So the way I'll do that is like this. If, if I do this, just death new, then what? Then I just did a series. The way I can do a data frame is I can pass in a list and I can say um, some columns here, right? And so it kind of looks weird, right, that I'm putting a list inside of brackets, but that's what's happening. And, and in this case, I'm really just interested in one thing, which is just, well, how many new deaths were there on this particular day? And so I do that and I get this nice data frame, um, which is going to work well for us. And then for my Y values, I can just um, directly pull it out as a series. And that will be death, new, uh, two weeks from now, right? So these will be my x values. That must be a data frame. And then this um, y values and this can be a series, right? And in general, why, why is that? Well, I'm trying to predict one thing, but I might be making that prediction based on multiple columns. So I'm going to head down here and I'm just going to copy these things. I'm going to copy this right here. And then I'm going to copy this right here, just like that. And I train it. So fit means to train based on the data. So I've given it a bunch of examples of my features um, and, my, uh, and my labels, right? So I can do that. Um, and that's relatively uneventful. And um, I would like to be able to visualize what it looks like, what this model looks like, kind of what predictions is it making if I have new new data. And it turns out that since I'm uh, doing the, the linear regression on just one column here, it's actually going to be fairly easy to visualize because I can ask it um, for a given um, x value, well, what y, y value do you predict? So I can do that with this. I can say lr.predict, and then I can have to pass in some sort of value here. Right? So I think I can um, pass in um, something like, hey, if there's 10 new deaths today, how many do I predict? Two weeks from now and I have to pass this in as a list of lists because that was the shape of this up here and um, and I can see that there's also this array thing which is a numpy array we're not going to worry about that too much for now the way I'll generally do these predictions is that I might create a data frame that will help me show a fit line right that's one way we can represent the relationship here right if I drew a line on this 
um, that would tell me for my x variable, well, what do I predict for my y? And so I'm gonna create a new fit data frame like this, that data frame, and, um, and then I may have a, a column, which will be death new. Remember that's the number of deaths today. And for that, I'm just trying to try to put a bunch of different values, right? Maybe I'll draw from like zero to um, 500. And let me just take a peek at that. Okay, so that's uh, my death new. And then what I can do is I can actually pass that whole thing in to my um, prediction to, uh, to basically um, figure out what those y values are. So I can say lr.predict. And if I want, I can put in my whole data frame like that and try to find out that column. And again, I get a bunch of these weird values, right, in this NumPy array. Uh, but the great thing is, is that I can say, I want to just shove those things in a new column. And I'm going to call that um, this. I'm going to say um, that. And then I might like to say something like um, predicted, right, to, to emphasize that this is not real data, it's just a prediction. So I'm going to put this up here. And now when I run this, I can see that um, I have, for a given uh, number of deaths on today, well, how many do I predict there will be two weeks from now, right? So if there's 500 deaths today, I guess I'm predicting that in two weeks, there's maybe 160 deaths per, for a particular county. And so what can I do now? I can actually plot this thing. I can say fit df.plot.line, and I can say x equals this thing, and I can say y equals this other thing, just like this. And different models will do, give you different things, but the linear regression right here that I'm using is trying to give me a straight line, right? So I'm gonna run that, and there's some sort of straight line there. And maybe I'll just make it um, red, because I'm gonna soon draw some new points. What I often like to do is after I have um, have the, my regression line, I like to compare it to my actual data and so remember I had um, these similar columns before and that was all in my original data frame and for my original data frame I just want to draw a scatter of all those points and then at this point I'm not drawing some sort of prediction I'm actually drawing uh, real data so I'm going to do that and um, I guess it's drawing it down here let me actually try to put, uh, put that on the same one so I'm going to say um, ax equals ax and then I may have the first one return an ax and then maybe um, down here I'll have the alpha be 0 0.2 again. And um, why did I put ax there? Um, there we go. And and so then, then I get these nice um, plots. And I, and I can see that's far too long. Maybe what I should have done is I should have, um, I can see my data only goes to about uh, 100. So maybe here I'll make my predictions over the range of about 100. And so I'm going to do that and I can see how, how that line fits. Okay, well, how well did I do? I mean, I might try to intuit that uh, based by looking at it. And really what I'm looking at is for each of these points, well, I I'd hope most of them are near the line and I can see quite a bit of them um, are not, right? And so the way we um, score these things is we'll look at um, what is the variance in the thing we're trying to predict, right? So what is the variance in this thing? A variance is kind of, um, um, a measure of how much the values typically differ from the average, right? So I can get my variance, and the variance in this column is 1.35. And the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, how much do each of these points differ from the average of the points along the y-axis? And then we're going to compare that to like, well, how much um, do they differ from that red line that I drew? Right? If, if the line is good, then, um, then that variance relative to the red line might go down a lot. I'm sorry, the variance um, relative to the red line might go down a lot relative to um, the average, which I guess I could draw as like a horizontal line. And, and so the way I can do that is I can come back here and just like I um, fit the data, where did I fit the data? I fit it right here. I can check, instead of fitting it, I can score it, right? And what this is going to tell me is how much of the variance is explained by the model. 
And that'll typically be a score between um, 0 and 1, with 0 being the worst and then 1 being the best. And in some kind of weird cases, it can actually go negative, and, uh, and maybe we'll eventually talk about that. But generally, it's going to be between 0 and 1. And, and so I see this is not great. Okay, let's try to um, do it for our other variable that we had as well, right? So I had this one here, and, and just looking at the plots, I might expect that this one does a little bit better than I think, what was it, like 9%. So I'm gonna copy these things down here. And so I'm gonna create a new, a new linear regression uh, object. And then what? Then I'm going to, um, fit it. Where was I fitting before? Here was how I was fitting before. Um, instead of fitting to the deaths on the day, well, let me try to um, fit to how many. Um, uh, oh, this. Um, I wanted to get the number of positive cases. Where is that? Let me let go up and look at my data frame again. I wanted to fit to the um, average number of cases over the last seven days. So I'm going to do that now, right? I'm going to train my model, my, this new model, based on this other variable. How, how, does, how can I use this to predict um, how many deaths there will be in, in two weeks? And, um, and maybe right away, I'm just going to score it as well. So maybe I'll just copy this and then score it. And I can see it's doing quite a bit better. Instead of explaining 9% of the variance, I'm explaining um, 20% of the variance. If I was explaining 100% of the variance, well, that would be very remarkable because every point would be exactly on that line. Um, let me try to plot it just like I did before. So I'm going to copy this here. And so I'm going to have to have this. And then remember that um, for this fit data frame, I had to generate that up here using a range of values. All right, so I'm going to paste this here. And, and so what am I going to do again? I'm going to generate um, values from 0 to 100, and that is telling me, well, what was a positive um, uh, seven-day uh, average cases? And then I'm going to get a prediction based on that, and then I can plot a line uh, like that. I'm going to do that, and I can see, um, well, something a little bit weird, right? I guess, um, I guess I didn't change everything, right? I see the x-axis is still how many deaths there were on the day, as opposed to what I'm actually training on, which was the seven day average, right? So let me fix that and run that again. And so that's a little bit better. I can see that the line doesn't extend very far. That makes sense. Previously, when I was saying, well, how many deaths were there on a given day, the number was relatively small compared to the number of positive COVID cases. And, and so maybe I'll, I'll redo this instead of going from um, zero to 100, maybe I'll go from zero to like 900. And so I run that. And, um, and I can see this is a better fit right now. I'm explaining 20% um, of, of the variance instead of, instead of just nine. So I did something bad here. Well, and I want to talk about that in the next video, but I just want to leave you with a thought. Um, let, let's say I'm teaching something in class and I work out an example. And so maybe everybody sees that example and they try to learn from it. Um, if I put exactly that same answer or the, exactly that same example on an exam, um, what does it mean that somebody does well on that exam? Um, I think there's two possibilities. One is that maybe the person genuinely um, learned something from that example, and, and then even though they're seeing the same example again, they understand what's going on. Well, the other possibility is that maybe somebody just memorized the answer to the example, and then when they see it on the exam, well, they just repeat it. And that would be not so great. And so the same thing happens here. Right, I'm um, when I'm fitting, I'm really giving my linear um, linear regression model some examples, and um, and then when I'm scoring it, well, I'm actually using those same examples, and and so if this score were good, and I guess here it's not great, but if it were good, then I wouldn't really know. Well, did the model effectively memorize the answers, or was it overfitting? Um, overfitting is what we mean when it basically memorizes it. So next time I'm going to talk about how we can actually um, deal with that problem and, and get a better sense of whether of whether it's doing a good job.